Praise the Lord. I greet you all in the name of uh, Lord Jesus Christ. And today we are going to uh, learn about how to hear the voice of God. I hope you are all ready. So, um, I want to uh, read to you John chapter 10 verses 27 and 28. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hands. So I was thinking, when I was thinking about um, how to hear the voice of God, the first thing that came to my mind is uh, um, Jesus uh, saying, my sheep will hear my voice. So then I was thinking about how does, uh, how do sheep respond to the voice of the shepherd? So I read few interesting things which I would like to share with you, uh, different comments um, of the shepherds. One shepherd says uh, the sheep can recognize up to 150 faces. And another comments that the sheep uh, recognizes the voice of the shepherd, the footsteps of the shef shepherd, even the vehicles the uh, shepherds um, travel. So when the vehicles are approaching, they jump, they, they you know make sounds with joy. And uh, uh, even um, when suppose they are just passing by, they try to get the attention of the shepherd by jumping over the, uh, over the fence and all. And um, on the opposite side, like if, if they see a stranger, they, if the fence is open, they just try to run away from that place and then hide somewhere. And uh, that's how the sheep are. So um, then uh, uh, now when I was thinking about when, when was the first time a, sh a shepherd's voice was heard, I mean, the voice of God was heard. I, I went back to uh, Genesis 3, 9. Uh, we see here, and, and the Lord God uh, called unto Adam and said unto him, uh, Where art thou? So, uh, and he said, he, God is calling Adam. So every day they had a practice that they uh, walk in the garden and uh, in the cool of the day, and then God speaks to them. So that's why they are very familiar with the voice of God. Now, when Adam hears the voice of God, instead of running to God in uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 10, he says, I, um, he went and he hid himself uh, because he realized something which he never realized before. That is, uh, so he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. So he was afraid uh, that he was naked and he hid himself. Now, when uh, they hear the voice of God every day, they go and they spend time with him in the cool of the day. But here we see that uh, when they, uh, when, when they uh, heard the voice of God, they were hiding. Something happened when they disobeyed God, um, they lost that um, communication. So, um, like if you see in Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, uh, it says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created him. So God created man in his own image, which means, uh, which means like God, a man was made in the likeness of God. So that's why he was, it was easy to fellowship with him. He, he was able to talk to uh, Adam uh, because he was made in the likeness of God. And uh, we see in uh, 1 Timothy 6, 16, it says, uh, whom only God immortal, immortality dwelled in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. So God is covered with the, uh, with light. So uh, we see that before Adam and uh, Eve fell, they were also covered with uh, the glory of God. So they had a common ground to fellowship. So uh, so now when uh, Adam sinned, Adam and Eve sinned, they lost that fellowship. So, uh, and uh, uh, you know, one thing that we stops us from hearing the voice of God is our sins. Um, uh, when we can read this in Isaiah 59 verse 1 and 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities, have separated you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that you uh, that he will not hear you. So now there is a separation that is happening because, because of the disobedience of Adam and Eve. Now God had to 
send them away from the garden of eden uh, now they cannot walk with god like they used to walk every day in the cool of the day in verse says it's a very uh, uh, genesis chapter 3 verse 8 it says and they heard the sound of the lord god walking in the garden in the cool of the day and adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the lord god among the trees so this was a practice god used to come and walk in the cool of the day and then spend time with adam and eve but now since because of the sins uh, um, in isaiah 59 uh, verse 2 it says but your iniquities have separated you and your god iniquities have uh, separated you and your god and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear now there is a gap now they are it, uh, they are separated from god every day god used to come god used to come to talk to them and they were available and they used to have a um, you know uh, talk with god that's why they were familiar with the voice of god when the cool of the day when god is calling they know it is the voice of god they could recognize because they had common grounds what are the requirements to hear the voice of god the first thing i i believe i i just made few points and that i i would like to share the first thing that is required to hear the voice of god is um having a right standing with him suppose there are two friends if their two friends should, uh, uh, can talk to each other they should have a common ground right they have something in similar they have a kind of fellowship communication now here we see the, the the communication is cut off because there is nothing in common now god dwells in light now man uh, lost that light and he is in darkness so light cannot fellowship with darkness so man lost that this thing so we come back to romans 3 uh, 22 uh, to 24 we see here even the righteousness of god which is by faith of jesus christ unto all and upon all those who believe for there is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in jesus christ now in romans 322 we say um, we see that 22 to 24 for us to hear the voice of god back in our lives to get that voice back in our lives now we need to have faith in jesus christ and then when we have the faith in jesus christ then we are justified and uh, redeemed so that's why then again we come back in communion with god fellowship with god so uh, it is first thing that we need to do is we need to have right relationship with god and that is possible only through faith in jesus christ so because all have sinned and uh, we have fallen short of the glory of god bible says being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in jesus christ so we are redeemed by the um, blood of jesus so now we are justified that is we uh, we have uh, like just as if we have not done anything wrong so we are restored back to fellowship restored back in a position where we can uh, we can uh, fellowship with god even like hebrews 4 uh, fourth chapter let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the time of need now suddenly we can come boldly into the throne room of grace that means it's the presence of god how is it possible because of what jesus did uh, that we may obtain mercy and grace in the time of need so we we can now approach the uh, approach god any time uh, not like the high priest or the priest they have a certain time certain uh, rituals that they have to do then only they can enter the presence of god but we have we can enter the presence of god boldly if we have uh, jesus christ as a redeemer uh, and if we are justified justified by having faith in jesus christ so that is the first basic uh, thing that is required then i was thinking what jesus said my um, in uh, john uh, chapter 10 verse 14 he says i am the shepherd and uh, know my sheep he says i am the shepherd and shepherd uh, knows his sheep that's that's how we, we hear in the story uh, in luke where uh, it says uh, a man had 100 sheep and one sheep was lost so the shepherd knows his sheep right when he took a count he knows the sheep one sheep is missing and he went to find that one sheep so the shepherd knows his uh, his sheep so here uh, god says i am the good shepherd and know my sheep and then uh, and uh, i am known by mine then i was uh, thinking about does your shepherd know you does your shepherd know you so here uh, uh, let's read matthew 7:22 uh, to 23 22 and 23 
many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils in the, in the name then many wonderful works and then when i prof, uh, then will i profess unto them i never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity so i was wondering like you know is there a way where god says i don't know your name then this this scripture portion uh, came to light he says many will come on that day there, there is a appointed day on that day many will come saying lord lord we prophesied on your uh, in your name we casted out devils and we did many wonderful works wow these are the signs of uh, believer uh, these signs shall follow those who believe uh, bible says in mark so these are believers these are believers they are doing uh, they are prophesying they are casting out devils they are doing wonderful works but and then will i will i profess unto them i never knew you depart from me ye were either work iniquity i was wondering what does that mean he say he calls them you are workers of iniquity so what is iniquity uh, iniquity in hebrew is avon and means to bend twist or distort that means um, so iniquities are uh, bending twisting or distorting of the law of god god's word so you take the word of god what god said and you twist it a little bit or you change it a little bit and you completely change it or change it a little bit you bend it little bit to according to your convenience like we see the serpent spoke to uh, uh, eve and eve uh, a little bit twisted the word of god so what god spoke so that's why they fell in trouble here we see iniquity is what is the people who are doing this prophesying in the name of jesus casting out devils in the name of jesus doing wonderful works in the name of jesus they took the word of god and they just changed it a little bit they bent it a little bit they changed the whole meaning and uh, according to their convenience they were using so god says i do not know you because bible says forever o oh lord your word is settled in heaven nobody can change what god already told so this was not acceptable in the sight of god uh, let's see matthew 25:11 i will read it out for you afterward came also the other virgin saying lord lord open to us but he answered and said verily i say unto you i know you not here we see this is the story of the 10 virgins 10 virgins virgin uh, here uh, means that uh, they are separated unto the lord but here the five are wise and five are foolish what did the five virgins do the five uh, wise virgins saved the oil uh, and the five foolish virgins were waiting they thought okay let me wait some more time when it is time we will go and get it but what happened unfortunately the uh, son of god um, came suddenly and he took the bride that is prepared and these people were looking for extra oil and they did not find anywhere by the time they came back the doors were closed and jesus says here i do not know you he cannot open the door he will not open the door and and he says verily verily i say unto you i know you not so these incidents um are very shaky where uh, you know they they are ready but they are not um, ready according to what god wants them to be ready they are re- they are ready thinking that they are ready but they actually they are not meeting the standards of god so for us to hear the voice of god he should uh, we should be known by him he cannot he will he shouldn't say i don't know you who are you Second Timothy two five says, and if also a man strive for masteries, yet he is not uh, crowned unless he strive lawfully. Uh, let me read it in a simpler version. Um, so Second Timothy two five. And also, if anyone competes in athletes, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is not enough to play. if i am a runner i cannot run, run off the tracks when i am i am in a race i cannot go off the tracks i am still running and we can we cannot say that i am still running yeah if you run off the tracks then you are out of the uh, competition so if you are running for a crown you must follow the rules here jesus uh, has certain rules jesus put certain rules this is how you have to uh, be but some people um, they bend they twist and they use it for their own gain so god calls them 
I say workers of iniquity, I don't know you. Luke chapter 13 verses 23 onwards. Then said one unto him, Lord, are, are there uh, few who are saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the uh, straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter and it shall not, uh, and uh, seek, to, seek to enter in and shall not be able. Uh, when once um, the master of the house is risen up and hath shut the door, and ye begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not from whence ye are. They shall, uh, they, then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I, I know you not from where you are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Here we see it very clearly. There are people who are, um, you know, there. They say, um, Jesus, the first thing is, he says, strives to enter in, at, uh, in the, through the straight uh, gray, gate because many will want to enter, but only few can make it. And the, I mean, it's such a, uh, what do you call, um, scary thing. Many will try to enter, but only few can enter. That's what uh, he says. Uh, suppose there is a competitive exam. Uh, there are only few seats, like four or five, but you see here, um, uh, 2,000 or, or 10,000 or 15,000 or 20,000 people write the exams. So, it's it's the competition is very high. Here you see, he says, many will strive, but only few will enter. Many will say, uh, be standing outside and knocking at the door. They, and they, they, what will they say? Open to, a, sorry, this is a different uh, thing, one minute. Yeah, true. So, um, and knocking at the door, they say, um, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he answers them and says unto them, I don't know you. I don't know you. They will say, no, we ate with you. We drank in your presence. You were walking in us. Uh, you, you taught in our streets. That means they're very familiar. Uh, that means they were having at a time fellowship with God. Eating and drinking signifies fellowship. They were having fellowship. And suddenly he says, but I say to you, uh, I know you not from whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Very sad, right? So God is saying here, you are working iniquity. That means you are taking my word, twisting it, bending it, and using it for your own gain. That's why you are work, workers of iniquity. So I don't know you. So this is a dangerous thing. God, if we... If we uh, change the things that God said. He says, I do not know you. Another incident, uh, once when he was uh, teaching his mother and his brothers come and uh, the people inside, uh, they say, your mother and your brother are uh, here. Then he says, who, who is my mother? Who are my brothers and sisters? Those who do the will of God. So those who do the will of God, that's what uh, God, Jesus says. So it's so important that we do, we play by the rules. Uh, to hear the voice of God, to be in uh, co communication with God. Then the next thing comes, um, um, you know, can you hear the voice of God? John 10, 4. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the, the sheep follow, for they uh, know his voice. For the sheep know his voice. Do you know? Are we able to hear his voice? How did Adam uh, and Eve know the voice of God? Like we said in Genesis 3, 8, And they heard the voice of the Lord uh, God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the uh, trees of the garden. Then they, they both were spending time with God. So spending time with God could be in worship. When you worship um, God's presence actually comes down and God starts speaking to you. It could be in prayer. It could be in reading the word. So, uh, God speaks through, uh, to us in many ways. So let's see how can you hear the voice of God. I have a I have few points. Let's discuss it. God speaks to us through scripture. First and foremost thing, when you read, the, that's why uh, you have to read the word of God. So, uh, there's a uh, Sunday school song which says, read the, read the Bible, pray every day, 
and you grow, grow, grow. And if you forget uh, uh, um, the Bible, I mean, neglect the Bible and forget to pray, you will shrink. So actually, well, the, uh, when you read the scripture daily, God starts speaking to you. What, uh, what an amazing thing it is that every believer reads the same Bible, whether it's Sunday school children or the youth or the preachers or the new believers. Everybody is given one book that is the Bible and it nourishes everybody. That is enough for everybody. So, uh, when we see uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all scripture is God's bread and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Here we see that uh, the word of God is inspired, God bread inspired by God. And so, uh, the word of God help, uh, teaches us rebukes us, corrects us and trains us in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for good work. So we just can't go and do good works but we have to be trained by the word of God. Amazing thing. So this word of God, God breath word of God speaks to us because the word of God is teaching us, rebuking us, correcting us, training us in righteousness. So, when the word of God is doing all this, that means the, when you read the word, it starts speaking to you. And then the change comes. When I came to God uh, initially, I was reading the Bible. My, my people, my family thought, uh, it's okay, it's good to know any religion. You know, there's no harm in knowing, knowing religion. But they didn't know, as I was reading the word of God, my life was being changed. Because this is not like any other thing. This is a living word. So, God speaks to you through the word of God. And suddenly when I was hearing the voice, uh, uh, God speaking to me through the word and I started changing myself. And, and then there, were, there was a time that the change was evident. It was not hidden. So uh, it is not like any other book. When you read the word of God, God speaks to you through his word. Hallelujah. Then uh, we see the second way God speaks to us is through teachers, uh, through the people, through the men and women of God. So I, I heard many testimonies like, you know, some people, uh, you know, they, they think that, okay, we are done with life. We want to end our lives. Okay. And then they think, okay, there is a meeting. Let me go and attend. And when they attend the meeting, God touches them and changes their lives. Through the preacher, uh, through the um, men, uh, men or the women of God, God speaks to them. And instead of uh, committing suicide, and instead of, uh, you know, giving up uh, themselves into something else, they, they, it happens that they change, they change and they transform. And uh, th these kind of people, many of them are ministers of God now. So through, through the uh, preachers, God speaks. That's why when we go on Sunday uh, to church and when he, we hear the word of God, that uh, word, uh, one word, probably it could be one word, but it touches you and changes you and gives you strength to go forward. So, um, God speaks through men and women of God. Then the third one, God speaks to us through audible voice. Audible, the voice that you can hear. We have many examples. We see in uh, 1 Samuel 3, 4, um, God calls Samuel, Samuel. And he says, uh, here I am. And he goes, he runs to Eli. Then uh, uh, Eli realizes that it is not, uh, it is God who is speaking to him. So audible voice. Then we hear uh, also in um, Exodus 3, 4, we see that uh, as Moses turns to um, turns to uh, see what why is the bush burning, we, then uh, when he approaches the bush, then he hears a voice in Exodus chapter 3, verse 4. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. So we see, God speaks to his people uh, through audible voice. Uh, we see in Acts 9.3 also, we see how um, uh, Saul, you know, hears the voice of God. He says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Then he says, who are you, Lord? And he says, I, I am uh, Jesus that you are persecuting. So that's how uh, clearly he could he hear the voice of God. And then uh, his life starts changing. So God speaks through audible voice. And uh, another way, fourth way, I can say that God, uh, fourth point uh, is God speaks through 
the holy spirit in a voice when you hear a in a voice it is if it is not in line with the scripture uh, it is not god god always speaks according to the word of god he doesn't speak to you uh, which is against the word of god acts 13 chapter verses 2 um, talks about paul, uh, the holy spirit asking the church to separate paul and barnabas for his work let's read it and they ministered to the lord and fasted the holy spirit said now separate to me barnabas and saul for the work to which i have called them then having fasted and prayed uh, and laid hands on them they sent them away so here the holy spirit speaks to his people and uh, here we see that uh, uh, they uh, the holy spirit says separate unto me barnabas and saul because for the work that i have so uh, sometimes this uh, could be from inner voice inside but it should be in line with the word of god so god sp- uh, speaks to us through his spirit uh, then um, another way god speaks to us is through dreams and visions we see here matthew 120 um, this is talking about joseph um, before uh, during the birth of christ but while he thought about these things behold an angel of the lord appeared to him in a dream saying joseph son of david do not be afraid to take to you uh, mary your wife for that which is conceived in her is of the holy spirit here now uh, joseph uh, comes to know that mary is pregnant and because he is a righteous man he thinks okay let me secretly you know put her away but he is born in a dream saying uh, uh, you know the child that she is having is bearing is actually what the lord appeared to him in a dream and saying joseph son of david do not be afraid to take to you mary your wife for that which she conceived in, in her is of the holy spirit so god speaks to um, us through dreams and then matthew second chapter 13 verse now when they had departed behold an angel of the lord appeared to joseph in a dream saying arise take your take the child your child and his uh, mother flee to egypt and stay there until i bring you word for herod will uh, seek the young child to destroy him here he is very specifically intru- um, instructed what to do um, in the dream so go here he says go to uh, flee to egypt and uh, because herod is going to seek to kill the child so god is clearly warning Uh, through dreams so god speaks through dreams then um, we see god speaks to through uh, speak to us, speaks to us through visions also acts chapter 10 um, you know when uh, uh, it is during the time when cornelius receives a uh, the angel comes and speaks to cornelius and uh, he says go uh, and seek peter and uh, he will tell you what to do next so now we see in acts chapter 9 10 uh, verse 9 The next day as they went on their journey and drew near to the city Peter went up on the house top to pray about the sixth hour then he became very hungry and wanted to eat but while they made ready he fell into a trance and saw heavens open heaven open and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners descending to him and led uh, led down to the earth in it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth wild beasts creeping things and birds of the air and a voice came unto him rise peter kill and eat but peter said not so lord for i have never eaten anything common or unclean and the and a voice uh, spoke to him again the second time what, uh, what god has cleansed you must not call common you must not call common here we see that peter sees goes into a trance and he sees a vision and uh, you know which led him to Uh, go to cornelius place and preach the gospel there and many were filled in the holy spirit which never happened so god speaks through dreams god speaks through visions these are uh, a few things that i put uh, together uh, to uh, to make it easy for you to understand how the ways that god speaks to you uh, so can anything keep us uh, from hearing from god yes if you have a wrong attitude if you have bitterness if you have unconfessed sins that can hinder your relationship with god when when you don't have a good relationship with god you cannot hear your voice holy spirit is a gentleman 
you know he won't he won't force himself on you or he won't dictate but he he gives us free will to decide do you want to hear the voice of god then well it is our choice if you want to hear, hear the voice of god if you want to know the will of god then we have to have good communication and good relationship with god we have to have right uh, relationship with the lord that means you have to make peace with your past how how do you make peace when you go to the cross when you say jesus you know um i have done these these things against you forgive me and cleanse me bible says if you confess your sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so john 1 chapter 1 In John chapter 1 verse 9 If we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness So if we confess then we'll be cleansed and we'll be restored So this is what God is looking for There are certain people in the Bible um, you know they they're not willing to accept like Cain God comes to Cain and says Where is your brother he says Where am I am I his keeper um, God says why are you angry he if you do well will you not be accepted if you are doing the right thing if you if you are really doing a right thing in a relationship will i will you not be accepted on the other hand david did uh, you know worse things and uh, god and when he repented god accepted him so repentance if we confess our sins to god he said yes psalm 51 psalm that that is a, a prayer of uh, david so he confesses to god and then god cleanses him and restores him so uh, it is very easy to be in communication with god only thing is you have to have right relationship with god and you should not twist or turn the word of god and use it for your own gain and uh, when you spend time in praise and worship prayer uh, then reading the word uh, so god speaks to you the most common thing uh, through which god speaks to you is uh, you know the word of god and the uh, um you know the men of men and women of god so do not neglect when you hear the voice of god if you stop if you neglect uh, you will stop hearing the voice of god so um he in hebrews uh, chapter 3 it says uh, verse 7 uh, therefore as the holy spirit says today if you hear will hear his voice do not harden your hearts as in the uh, as in the rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness where your father tested me tried me and say and saw my works 40 years therefore i was angry with the generation and said uh, they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways so i swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest so uh, god says today if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts so god speaks to us because he is a living god and uh, you know he he desires he waits for his children to come back to him so let's not uh, be people who neglect or ignore the voice of god when god speaks to you today respond to the voice of god whatever he is speaking it will be in line with the word of god he will not speak anything against um, the word of god because the word of god is again um, jesus so he will not go against anything what jesus has said hallelujah let's uh, close with the word of prayer hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah ikara mashamanda rakuriyanda ramasamanda kuriyanda rabasabara baba 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 lord you said my sheep will hear my voice and they know me and they follow me oh god and uh, i know them and they, i am known by them father god lord bakara basabara bakuriyanda rabasabara baba 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 Lord we help us to be the sheep that hears your voice oh god father and a stranger's voice we will not follow oh god father help us oh lord to have that right standing with you oh lord help us not to father god twist and father god change the word of god for our own gain oh father god but help us to follow you wherever you lead us oh god because you are a god who leads us into uh, father god green pastures of oh father god yes lord you are the one who is interested to restore us oh and make us whole oh god father lord i pray oh father that you would touch each and every one of us oh god and heal oh father god deliver oh god speak oh god father we thank you we praise you for everything oh lord thank you master
I, I pray that everyone that listens to this uh, message will be blessed, O oh God, Father. And they will start hearing the voice of God in the name of Jesus. Break everything that is being a hindrance in their lives to hear the voice of God, O oh Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God, Father. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray. Amen.